So it's that time of year once more where we're looking ahead and seeing what's going to be trending this year, what's going to be trending next year. Well, don't you worry because I've got you covered. Number one is going to be showtime. So I'm talking about theatre in cocktails here. You may have noticed that in certain bars, theatre plays a big part in the drinks there. It's not just about a place where you go and order a drink, you get a cocktail, but it's about the story or the concept of the menu, the drink itself, flair bartending, a lot of theatricals involved. Now, what we've seen with the cost of living crisis is a lot of people treating cocktails in particular as more of a luxury, more as a treat. A lot of people can now make these cocktails at home. So when they go to a bar to order it, they want more than the drink. They want the experience now. It's no longer about just getting drunk the tastiest way possible. It's about the experience that you get from ordering a cocktail. So theatre in bars is going to be going away or we're going to see a lot more of it. So if you want to get involved in this, a couple of ideas that I've got that I've wrote down are concept menus. You know, menus based around periods of time or art or culture. A good concept menu where all the cocktails connect to each other. That's a great idea to add a little bit of theatrical je ne sais quoi to your menu. Another thing you could do is consumer involvement. Okay, so a great example of this would be where you do two separate bottles and the customer actually has to pour them together so they mix it themselves. Or we see a lot with things like smoke, where you could do the bell jar, you fill it with smoke, that was big in like 2018. We're gonna see that, you can bring that back more of those theatrics, something where the consumer of the cocktail can be involved in it. A garnish that you've got to add to the drink, a little part of it that brings the drink more into the conversation, as opposed to just being something that complements the conversation. One other thing would be presentation, which I kind of spoke about with the smoke thing, but you could do funky glassware, different kind of exciting vessels. Number two, we're talking about nostalgia. A lot of people are looking back and especially in this day and age, there's a lot of things that we can't do anymore, right? You can't use a straw because it'll kill the turtles. Ice is suddenly bad for the environment. The ingredients are bad for ourselves. We can't eat this, we can't eat this. Every time we turn the radio on, every time we listen to the news, there's a new ingredient we're not allowed to have. There's another thing that's ruining the environment, which means that the enjoyment of cocktails has been slipping. People are now feeling bad for having cocktails. It's not healthy for you. There's too many calories in it. So people are feeling bad. So what we're going to see to be able to shift that back up is nostalgia. You know, hitting people with childhood's times when we didn't worry about all these things. We didn't worry about how many vitamins was in our drinks. We didn't worry about how bad something was for the environment. The cocktail is going to work as a little bit of escapism from the world around us. And the best way to target that, the best way to hit that is nostalgia. So a couple of ideas you can do for this, you can do the ingredients, nostalgic ingredients, things like peanut butter, things like cereal. Think about childhood flavors and ways you can incorporate them into cocktails. That's a great idea. Another thing is just the name. If you don't want to mess around with your cocktail too much, you can hit nostalgia just by changing the name. Think about certain icons or old movies that you can name your cocktail of. Things like, you know, you could have the Goonies, you could have the Hepburn Martina, or what about a good pun? Everyone loves a pun. How about Honey, I Drunk the Figs? A little Honey and Fig cocktail? A little Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Honey, I Drunk the Figs. What you've got there, you've got a bit of nostalgia and you don't have to play around with the ingredients too much. Another way you can do this in a bar is to bring back retro serves. I'm not talking about retro serves like Old Fashions and View Carrés or Manhattans. I'm talking about the 1980s, 1990s cocktails that was massively popular and then dropped right off because they were too sugary, they lacked any innovation, they lacked any creativity. They're going to be coming back. Things like blue cocktails, blue lagoon, sex on the beach, a woo-woo, Long Island iced tea. When was the last time you had a mudslide? When was the last time you had a white Russian? In this day and age, when you see that on the menu, it's going to remind you of an easier time. You're going to want to feel like you felt when you used to drink those cocktails in uni or in college. 
Number three, we have higher education. Okay, so this stems from lockdown. In lockdown, a lot of people who like cocktails started making cocktails themselves. So the consumer knowledge on how to make a drink went through the roof. Back in the day as a bartender, a little bit of knowledge got you a long way. A little fact here, your homemade syrup there, it impressed people. It's no longer impressing people, which means for you to, you know, identify yourself as a top cocktail maker or a top bar, you need to be educated. You need to know how to do innovative drinks, drinks that people can't make themselves at home. Something like a caramel espresso martina, nobody was doing those at home. So when they came into your bar and saw that, they would order it. But now, people are doing way more than that at home. They're doing salted caramel espresso martinis, they're doing hazelnut espresso martinis, and they know how they like it better than you do. So in order to get ahead, you're gonna to need to give them something they've not had before, which means educating yourself. And this is both from the home bartender and professional. Everyone's learning, everyone's expanding their knowledge. So a great way to do this is just to be able to read more resources on cocktails, things like this video alone, knowing what is trending. You just watching this video is improving your knowledge on drinks and on the industry. That's already one step, congratulations. That's one step in the right direction. A lot of top bartenders are turning their knowledge into courses and becoming educators. I have just happened to done it myself. You know, I spent the majority of last year developing and creating a course with a team of people, and which has now been released. So, hey, that's one way to improve your education. Check out that course. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, I have a trailer for it on this channel. It's three hours of on-demand video. You get 11 downloadables, my full flavor guide, my formulas to how to make a cocktail. The course itself is based around how to make a drink from scratch. So it's not a bunch of recipes that you could just Google and find yourself. It's teaching you the process of how to create a cocktail from nothing, how to create an original cocktail. I'll leave a link in the description. All the information is there on the course, but it's how to make cocktails from scratch and it's high quality, high production. I guarantee you will not find another course on cocktails that are as high production as this. Took a long time, so do check that out. Number four, we have batching cocktails. With cocktails showing a lot more innovation and cocktails pushing the limits, it means we're struggling to make them from fresh. Okay, so batching cocktails is a great way to get around that. It means that people don't have to wait five or 10 minutes for you to mess around with all these ingredients to make a cocktail. People are seeing batching as a lot more consistent as well. A lot of people are leaving the industry, a lot of people are joining the industry. So in bars in particular, consistency is slipping. The cocktails are tasting different from one bartender to the other. But if you batch them, if you have your specific spec for a certain cocktail and you batch that up, it's gonna work a treat. Now obviously you can't batch every cocktail, but there is a lot of great cocktails you can batch and even the ones that do involve fresh fruit, you can batch the aspects of the drink that don't use fresh fruit. I mean, just look at the 50 top bars of today. They're all using batch cocktails. Number five is premium drinking. A lot of younger people today are drinking less. People are no longer going out on the weekend and getting blackout drunk. Instead, they're spacing out the drinking. So people are choosing quality over quantity. So premium drinking is becoming a lot more accessible. A big part of this is also social media. A lot of people are sharing what they're drinking online. And if you've got a four pound bottle of wine, it doesn't look that great in a post as opposed to having a 20, 25 pound bottle. So I'm not saying people are going out there and they're just going straight for the top shelf stuff, but people are skipping the bottom shelf completely and they're going to that middle ground. Even in cocktails, a lot of them are being stripped back, so the quality of the ingredients in there becomes massively important. Another aspect would be, like I spoke about, higher education. People are being more educated in what they drink. So now when you have a cocktail, back in the day it used to just say, you know, gin, lemon and lychee. Now people are gonna ask you, well, what kind of gin is it? And they don't want that low ball gin. Number six, and in the ballpark of premium drinking, we have luxury rum. Rum has been taking a hit for a few years now. It used to be massively big when people was going out on the weekend and just binging, especially in places like tiki bars. As people have been looking more towards premium drinks and more towards innovative cocktails, rum has slowly slipped down. But now we're coming in a place where we're seeing 
rum being created in a lot more innovative ways and more premium. So luxury rum is going up. If you look at the market today of like alcohol auctions, it's not just scotch anymore, but a lot of rums are being sold, a lot of aged rums, people putting more emphasis on age statements within rums. Even collectors are branching out now to rums. A lot of people are making movements in luxury rum, which means the brands, they're focusing less on their baseline range and more on their aged rums, rums that are made for sipping, rums that are made for drinking neat and collecting. So we're seeing a lot more luxury rum, but be careful within this category. Because it's trending and because it's taken off, what a lot of people are doing is they're taking low quality spirits, low quality rums, and they're putting them in expensive bottles with big price tags. So what you're basically buying is a glorified decanter be really careful with the brands, look into the brands and make sure that it's not just the bottle that's giving it the big price, but it's actually the liquid inside. You're way better off getting an expensive rum in a basic bottle when you know it's the liquid that's expensive than getting this big glorified bottle where the liquid inside is pretty basic. Number seven, it's non-alcoholic and it's mindful drinking. And I speak about this every year. And every year it grows bigger and bigger and it still is. A lot of people today are not drinking than they ever was before. I'm not going to speak too much on this because I've got loads of resources on this channel and on the website Smart Blend. Loads of resources on mindful drinking, what it is, why it's trending. But what I will speak about is the differences we're seeing today where a lot of people who do drink are also choosing non-alcoholic drinks. Number eight, we have food pairings. This comes with the non-alcoholics. This comes with the premium drinking. It's people slowing down. It's people drinking more with meals as opposed to going out clubbing. People just don't club anymore. Instead, they're drinking with food. So having food and drink pairings, whether that be wine or something new, something like beer and food pairings, gin and food, cocktails and food but food pairing is going to be something that's taking off more and more and i think we're going to see way into 2024 and beyond and last but not least we have tiktok cocktails or as i like to call them tiktok tales tiktok has been on the rise and a lot of creators a lot of bartenders have been taken to the app to make drinks now a lot of bartenders don't like this because people are coming into bars showing them a 20 second video on tiktok and saying can you make this cocktail it can be annoying, but no matter how much you discredit it, it's got massive influence on the market, massive influence on the trends that we're going to see. Last year, we saw a massive breakout in Negroni Spagliatos. This is a cocktail that's been around for many, many years, but it was barely ever made, was barely ever ordered. People barely knew it. All of a sudden, it was massive. Everyone now knows what a Negroni Spagliato is. Why? Because of a less than 30 second video on TikTok of someone saying they like one. That right there is proof that TikTok has the power to influence the market. Creators on TikTok are going to be manipulating how we drink cocktails. What trends on TikTok is going to be trending in real life. So to keep up with the trends, TikTok is going to be a major resource on what's going to be big. Hey, I've jumped into it myself. I've got TikTok. I make cocktails. You should, you know, give me a little follow. I'm not influencing the market anytime soon. I've only got like 700 followers, but who knows? Maybe I could be the next big TikTok bartender. So that concludes my trend predictions of the year. And like I said, a lot of these are going to be moving into next year. So note them down and get involved. Sorry, this video has came to you later in the year than I would have liked. But what can I say? I was busy watching TikTok.